Hello everybody. Depending on where you live, schools have been in session for about a month now. And with September starting to come to a close, career fairs are going to be cropping up all across campuses. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the exact resume that I used my senior year of college in order to land my first full-time job out of college. I'm going to be going over all of the mistakes that I've made on this resume, as well as all the important details that I included that got me interviews at all of the jobs that I applied for, except for one. And that was because I really wasn't qualified for that job. So let's get started by taking a look at my resume now. The first thing that you're gonna notice is I replaced all the addresses with fake addresses, names with fake names, company names with fake company names, so on and so on. And I also replaced all of the dates with dates that would line up with if I was going to be graduating next year in May. So let's get started first by looking at the header here, which I think is one of the worst things on my entire resume. As you can see, this header takes up four lines, which is quite a bit of space on the resume. It also includes two addresses here, which is a terrible idea. I included the apartment address that I was living at, as well as the address where my parents lived, which is completely pointless. So if I was going to be doing this again, I would remove this address and only leave my current address where I was actually living. I have my email here, which is great. This is the primary way that people are going to contact you for an interview, as well as my phone number, which is probably the secondary way people will contact you. Also, as you can see, I have huge margins at the top of my page, as well as at the bottom of my page, and these should definitely be mitigated and removed. That way I can get the most amount of space for the content in my resume and the least amount of space for these margins and this heading content that just says my name as well as my address and such. So if I were to do this again, I would take these margins, shrink them, remove this permanent address, leave only the current address, and get rid of this current part here. And then this would free me up with much more space for me to be able to go deeper into my experience and personal projects. The next thing on my resume is my objective. This could be named different things, but essentially this is just a short introduction of what do you want to get from the company that you're applying to. This will let you specify that you're looking for full-time work if you're going to be graduating, if you're looking for an internship, if maybe you're a freshman, sophomore, or really whatever you want to get out of the company, this is where you put it. It should be short, sweet, and to the point. Try not to go more than one line, and definitely no more than two lines in this. It should be really just one sentence that tells the company exactly what you're looking for. So for mine, I wrote, to obtain a full-time job working as a software engineer to develop, maintain, and design software. I kept it fairly vague because I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into web development, if I wanted to go into app development, if I wanted to go into desktop software development. So this statement right here says, I really just want to work with any form of software development. It doesn't really matter for me. I was leaning more towards web development at the time, but I kept it general so that way I could apply it to multiple companies that weren't just web development centric. Next thing on here, education. This is also incredibly important if you are graduating from a college with any degree, even if it's not a computer science degree, you can still apply to computer science jobs if you have a business degree or a history degree. It's great to show that you went through college and graduated because that shows your employers that you have actually accomplished something, even if it's not directly related to computer science in any way. So for me here, I put my bachelor's degree of science and computer engineering. I actually got a computer engineering degree instead of a computer science degree. I got the school I graduated from here, my minor, which was in business, put your GPA, and then I also graduated with the honors, so I put that here on the end as well. Essentially, in this education section, you wanna put the school you graduated from or are going to be graduating from, as well as your graduation date. You wanna put your majors and minors, your GPA, and then if you have some form of accolade that is prestigious, such as graduating with honors, put that here. Don't put any of your coursework, don't put any of your like honors clubs that you joined, for example, or certain awards that you got for something minor, really only put major achievements in here, such as graduating with honors, that will put you distinctly above someone that does not have that. If, for example, you joined a group that you paid $60 for and 100,000 other people all joined that group, that really doesn't distinguish you and just takes up space on your resume that could be better served for putting actual experience and personal projects, which is really what your employer cares about the most. The next section here is what I titled developer skills but really should just be all skills in general, soft skills, developer skills, technical skills. It really should just be a skills section, which is where I kind of messed up. I could have put a lot of other skills in here instead of just technical developer skills. So I have 
just my basic skills from things that I learned mostly on my own through my personal projects, but as well as through the companies that I've worked for. So I put that I have extensive .NET experience that I've worked with JavaScript, both Node.js and jQuery, multiple PHP projects. And then I also put Java, C, C++, some of the things that I didn't know as well, just kind of listed them on there saying, I do know this, but I'm not as proficient as these other ones that I listed on their individual bullet points. This I think is probably one of the weakest sections of my resume, because as I mentioned, I only put technical skills. I have no soft skills on here at all, which are ultimately probably more important for getting your job because so many different developers have strong developer skills, but not as many have strong soft skills. So if you can emphasize and prove that you have good soft skills in certain things, such as communication with non-technical people, communication with technical people, working in a team environment, that's really what the person that is going to hire you wants to see. So in here, if I were to change this, I would change it from just developer skills to all skills. I would include some of my soft skills, such as being able to communicate technical things in a non-technical way, as well as make this so it's probably three columns as opposed to two, since I have a lot of white space in the middle that's not actually doing any good for my resume, it's just taking up space. That way I could fit two extra things without actually going to another line. And I really don't want to make this skills section very large. That's what I do like about my resume, as I have only two lines devoted to skills, because skills really don't mean anything. Like I could say, oh, I know PHP, but if you don't prove it with something else, they have no way of knowing if you actually know PHP, you just listed it. So it's like not that relevant, as opposed to down here, I have PHP projects listed saying, okay, here's some things I've done with PHP, which is much more pertinent that proves that you actually know what you're talking about. So keep the skills section short to the point and focus more on soft skills instead of technical skills, since everybody else applying also probably has a similar level of technical skills, but not soft skills. So you really want to emphasize your soft skills over your technical skills. Next on my resume, I have two sections here that are very similar. I have relevant experience and then personal projects. This relevant experience section is experience working in a more professional environment for companies. And the personal projects are just projects that I worked on either by myself or with a small group of other people, but they're not school projects, which is important. Don't put school projects on your resume because every other person that went to that same school as you has the exact same school project and they probably have it on their resume and it really does not distinguish you and it just takes up a ton of space on your resume. So number one tip, do not put school projects on your resume unless they are distinctly unique. And I'll show an example of that in my relevant experience section up here. So first, I have my first internship that I got and the only internship I had up to this point. I worked as a full stack software developer for a fairly large company where I lived and I put a few bullet points here to describe what I did. So I have developed backend business workflow and task management system and then develop and design front end data representation web pages using .NET framework. So the important thing about these bullet points is that I put what I did and what I worked with without just saying created something with .NET. So I put on my first bullet point, develop backend business workflow and task management system. This shows that I actually worked on a project and it shows what the project is. It's a large scale project and this project has meaning to be able to be giving value to the company. And then in my second bullet point here, I went a little bit more technical saying I work designing front end web pages as well as using .NET framework on the back end to kind of give an idea of the technologies I worked with while at this company. One thing I think I could have improved on is changing this first bullet point to be less of a description of what I created and more of the value that what I created gave the company. Because a company hires you for the value that you provide for them. So in your resume, you want to show how you provided value to the previous companies you worked at. So instead of just listing that I created a business workflow and task management system, I should write how that business workflow and task management system actually benefited the company and either increase their profit, reduce their expenses, etc. So that is one thing I should have done. And I really didn't do that on any of my relevant experience or personal projects, which is another mistake that I've made. As for formatting here, I put my actual job title or what the project was that I worked on here, put the name of the company that I worked for, the dates that I worked for, which is crucial. You need to have these dates. They know how long you have had work experience as well as the location of where I worked at. The second example I have here is a startup that I worked on. And this is actually a school project, technically. It's my senior project that I created for school. So I had an entire year where I had to work on a project and my project was to create a startup. But this project is unique to me and the four other people that I worked on this with, 
no one else in my entire school had a startup as their project. And since it's a startup, it's inherently unique because we created the idea ourselves. So I also put here the company that sponsored us, the city, state, dates as well. And I put a small description of what the project was. And this is mostly because I had only started this one month before applying because I applied in September. And as you can see, I started this in August. So I didn't really have much of an idea of what this project was going to be. So I put an overview of what the startup was as a bullet point, just to kind of give them an idea of, hey, this is what I'm working on. But I really didn't know what I was going to be working on and I hadn't created any value yet. So I couldn't elaborate too much further. The next section I have is my personal projects section. And this section is a bit controversial. Many people will tell you, don't put personal projects on your resume. They look unprofessional. Companies don't actually care about your personal projects, but that is entirely wrong. Personal projects are, I think, one of the most important things you can put on a resume, especially if you're applying for your first full-time job or even your first internship, because you have no other experience to hover on except for internships you worked on in school. So personal projects are what are going to distinguish you from other candidates above all other things you can put on your resume. So for me, I included the most amount of space on my resume for my personal projects. As you can see, this takes up about a third of my resume for just personal projects and one my relevant experience, which is a much smaller section, and then objective education developer skills, even smaller, all combined together than my personal projects. I made sure to emphasize my personal projects here, which I think is one of the reasons that I got interviews at all but one of the companies that I applied for. So I delved into my different personal projects and I tried to include my most fully fledged projects, as well as including an array of different technologies that I used for these projects. So the first one here is just a PHP website that I made for a friend of mine who created YouTube content and streamed on Twitch. And I described kind of what I did. I said I designed a website to showcase his products and services offered by the content creator. And that's a great sentence because that shows the value that I created for this content creator. I also put that I developed a backend to consume APIs from different sources which is much more of a technical point, kind of like in my previous example here for the full stack software developer, I put a more business related point and then a more technical point. I did the same thing down here and I kind of followed that pattern with a lot of my different projects. I won't delve too deeply into these next two projects since they're essentially the same thing, but different projects. So I put another point for business slash value generating topic and then a technical point kind of the same thing. These ones are a little bit more technical related because there's not much value generation since they were personal projects with no actual business goal in mind. But one thing that you will notice that is my biggest mistake by far on this entire resume is I have no links to any of these projects. No way for them to view these, no way for them to verify that this is real. I just have, I did this, trust me. No link, nothing. And that is terrible. You always want to put some form of link URL, whatever it is to be able to access that project. So if, for example, you have this PHP website hosted, I should put a link just right here to the actual website and make sure that you write out the full link because especially if you go to a career fair, you're handing them a printed copy of your resume. They can't click on a link if you don't actually include the full link for them to type out. So make sure you put full links anywhere on your resume if you plan to have it printed out. Another thing that is crucial is to include links to your GitHub page if you have GitHub repositories hosted there, to a code pen page if you have code pens. Put all of that information up here in your contact section is what I would do. Just make another line here, put your GitHub user, put your code pen user, Stack Overflow, whatever it is, wherever you have projects stored that you want them to be able to view, put that information up here, especially GitHub. And if you have never used Git or GitHub, which I hate to admit it, but at this point when I was applying, I had not used Git or GitHub for anything. You need to learn that now. I have a video for that. I'll link to it up in the corner and in info cards. Just click on that, watch it. Super quick video that'll teach you all you need to know about Git. But that was another mistake of mine. I had no GitHub account, no projects on my Git for people to actually view. And that was a problem when I applied because many places said, email me back and said, hey, we like what we see, but we want proof of your projects. So I had to send them Dropbox links, which was just terrible. Don't ever do that. Use GitHub. It'll be so much better. So down here in the personal projects, yeah, I need a link for these as well as source code if the source code is open and available. And do the same thing for your relevant experience for other companies. If they have a public page that you worked on, link to that saying, hey, I've worked on this. So that way they can see that as well. It's a little bit harder with companies as opposed to personal projects because there's a lot of proprietary information. 
but you can still sometimes get away with linking different sites from companies that you've worked at, as well as your personal projects. This will really show that you completed something, especially if it's a personal project. If you completed a personal project and have it anywhere, whether it's just source code or hosted, that's amazing and will go miles in your interview because people will say, this guy completed something, so I'm sure when we hire him, he can complete things for us. It shows that you have a lot of determination and willpower. The last thing on my resume is this additional experience section, which is really not super important, but I included it because I had a long history of work experience. As you can see here, this is eight years ago if I was applying today. So I had eight years of work history that I wanted to showcase. So this section, really not super crucial. If you don't have space for it, just leave it off, but I have the extra space. So I wanted to include this additional experience section to say, okay, these are other things I've done that show that I'm hardworking and determined, and then I can work for a long period of time for a company because a company doesn't want to hire someone that's going to quit next year. Overall, this is a fairly solid resume that can be used to great success in a senior career fair looking for a full-time job, especially if this were to be tweaked with some of the things that I mentioned earlier, such as reducing the size of this header, cleaning up some of these addresses, including a link to a GitHub if I had had one, which hopefully you will have one if you're in this situation. That will go miles in helping create extra space for you, as well as creating relevant information for the employer because GitHub and any form of source code will go miles farther than whatever you can write in a single page of a resume. And then lastly, if you have additional space, put some of your previous jobs that are not as relatable, especially if you're coming from a background of someone that's going back to school, become a web developer or a computer science or programmer that had another job before, this additional experience is a little bit more important since it shows you had a long work history doing something else. And that's why you may be older or maybe coming to school later or having less experience than some other graduates. I really hope that this helped you guys in order to analyze what I did wrong on my resume and what I did right so that when you create your resume, you can take all the mistakes that I made, learn from them, and also include all of the things that I did right in order to make a much better resume than I ever did. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for more similar content. Also, leave me a comment down below letting me know any questions you guys have about your resume that you guys are writing for any future jobs, and I'll make sure to get back to you with the best answer that I can. Also, let me know if you guys want me to review your resumes in future videos. I'd love to take a look at any resumes that you guys have and give suggestions and feedback on what could be improved, what could be removed, what could be added in order to make a better resume that'll give you a better odds of getting the job that you actually want. So please, let me know if you guys want that down below, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great day.